Hello again, everybody. Zaki Taki is here with the attack line for Wednesday, October the 17th, 2012. Alright, let's kick it off with your billboard number ones. Well, we have, yes, still number ones across the board. Starting with still number one album for the third week in a row, Mother and Sons retaining with Babel. And yes, despite every effort, from Sai, once again he gets thwarted by Maroon 5 for one more week with one more night still waiting at number one for a fourth or fifth week in a row. Please kick it off soon. Man. At least it got a good reception in the last couple of shows that song One More Night did. Anyway, and we also have a still number one country single, which is Taylor Swift's We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, still number one for the second week under country songs. Or go country airplay wise, radio charts, Carrie Underwood's number one, we're blown away. So there you go. Billboard number ones. Now, speaking of people has been number one on Billboard, on with news about the Super Bowl. Now, Super Bowl halftime show is always seen to be announced around November. Well, it's announced early this year. Pepsi sponsoring again for the first time since 2007. So, performing at the Super Bowl 47 halftime show. Which will be, of course, in New Orleans, Louisiana, on February 3rd, 2013. Joining the likes of previous halftime show performers like Paul McCartney, U2, Aerosmith, Britney Spears, No Doubt, Sting, Prince, the Black Eyed Peas, and of course, last year's performer, Madonna, will be multi Grammy Award winning artist and Mrs. Jay Z herself. Beyonce! Of course, Beyonce's been keeping a low profile. Despite the release of her last album, Four, not being a pop success, she, of course, had a quiet year with, of course, the birth of a baby, Baby Blue Blue Ivy. Now, with the baby bound, Beyonce's trying to jump back into the spotlight by performing in front of the biggest audience in television history. Of course, Madonna's halftime show was seen by 144 million people. About as much people watching the game than the half was halftime people with Madonna. So, of course, Beyonce. Now, my opinion about this choice of Beyonce, I'm mixed by it. She has more on B hits than pop hits. She could fill in the blanks by putting a possible Destiny's Child reunion and a cameo from her husband to really hype up the show a bit. And I know Beyonce would put on a good show, but she needs a little bit more oof besides her three pop hits. Single Ladies, Crazy in Love, which will probably see a cameo from Jay, and Irreplaceable. I would guess predictions now for the set list, I would guess those three, plus maybe two Destiny Shout songs, Independent Women, and Bills, 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 or Survival, basically. Uh, and then maybe like a Jay Z song after he comes out with Independent Women. Like, do like uh, Empire State of Mind and make Beyonce take Alicia Keys' part. But we'll see what the set list is going to be on February 3rd as Pepsi presents the Super Bowl halftime show starring Beyonce on February 3rd. Kind of a weird choice. I love Madonna last year, but last time they had a new artist, Black Eyed Peas, we all know that failed. But we'll see what goes down with Beyonce at Super Bowl 47 in February. So good luck to you, Beyonce. Now, on with a uh, little happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 40th birthday. To Michigan's own Eminem. Yeah, Eminem turns 40 today. Of course, the multi award platinum winning Detroit rapper has had another quiet year himself after a huge year in 2010 with the multi platinum album Recovery. Eminem kept himself a low profile. He is working on a, hopefully, working on a new album following a side project, Man Meets Evil, with the hit Lighters. So, happy birthday to you, Eminem. Of course, Eminem made a video, like I said. His last album was 2010's hugely successful recovery, aided by the success of Love the Way You Lie. Of course, the song with Rihanna in the music video starred the guy from Lost in Lord of the Rings, and also starred Megan Fox, who gave birth recently. You know, today she announced that she gave birth to a baby boy last month to her boyfriend, former 90210 star Brian Austin Green. According to a statement today, I saw it on Facebook first, and I did, and she said that 
Her son, Noah Shannon Green, a boy, was born on September 27th. She hasn't revealed the birthday until now. She said, he is healthy, happy, and perfect, she said. We are humbled to have the opportunity to call ourselves the parents of this beautiful soul, and I am forever grateful to God for allowing me to know this kind of boundless, immaculate love. Thanks to those of you who wish to send your positive energy and well wishes. May God bless you and your families abundantly. Because there's a first child for the couple, but also had a baby from another relationship. A 10-year-old. So, uh, there go. Congrats to them. And also congrats to Weapon Tiger, Mr. Wax City himself. He also had a baby with his girlfriend, Black China, welcoming their first child yesterday, King Cairo. <laughs> That's a weird name. On Tuesday. The 22-year-old rapper tweeted out a photo of him cradling a newborn in his arms to his followers. Unlike Megan, who didn't release a photo. With the single caption, Most amazing feeling ever. Blessed to kings at King Cairo. So, they can congrats to Tiger. Congrats to Megan Fox. On their new babies, which are both boys. So congrats to congrats to them on the babies being born. So there you go, congrats to them. Now, speaking of rappers, on to a rapper that just got arrested. My main band from one of my favorite rap groups, which is of course nominated for eligibility for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Pump Academy, and my boy Flavor Flame, unfortunately the Rapper and, of course, former reality star got arrested early this morning at 3.30 a.m. in Vegas. The Vegas police said that Flavor Flav is jailed on felony charges stemming from a domestic argument with his fiance and threats to attack her teenage son with a knife. Police officers said that no one was injured before the arrest around 3.30 a.m. at a home in a residential neighborhood seven miles from Vegas. 53-year-old rapper, of course, women named William Jonathan Drayton, was being held at a $23,000 bail at the Clark County Jail with an initial court appearance scheduled tomorrow. It is not clear if he has a lawyer. Of course, Flavor Flav was arrested many times back in the 90s, but apparently got his life back on track, but now, of course, getting arrested again. So, uh, there you go. Flavor Flav getting arrested because of attacking his fiance and his fiance's son. So, uh, there you go. Now, on with a uh, little TV news before I get to sports. Uh, Mountain Family! Last week, we had a dumb ahead of to make up for the debate, which was on the week before last. And I had to make a review of the episodes. Uh, the first episode was okay. Uh, about the uh, changes with Haley going to college, and of course, Lily going to kindergarten, and a little altercation with the son. It was okay episode. And Gloria getting used to maternity outfits. But then, the second episode was a lot better than the first one. Probably the first really good episode of season four thus for the second episode last week, which was funny as hell. So I can't wait to see what is up tonight on Martin. Ten when Fred's accepted me, and I was or attempted to accept me. It was kind of funny. Funny episode at 9:30 last week. Second episode now it's time for Martin Return. Just at nine. One episode tonight at nine. Only on ABC. It's gonna be a tough night for me watching Modern Family. And hopefully watching the Tigers sweep the Yankees. <laughs> Tigers beat the Yankees last night in a nail-biting ninth inning with uh, two to two to one. That means the Tigers have a chance tonight to sweep the Yankees and go on to the World Series. So go Tigers! Yay! All right. On with some other sports news, starting with UFC. Now UFC announced the two new coaches for the upcoming season of the Ultimate Fighter. It's going to be light heavyweight champion, John Bone Jones, finally coaching against Chael Sonnen. Now we all know what happened back in September with UFC 152's cancellation with John Bone Jones avoiding a fight with Chael Sonnen. Now Sonnen and John Jones will coach against each other on the Ultimate Fighter. And yes, there will be a light heavyweight championship fight in, in April. So, uh, there you go. And uh, Son was supposed to fight in UFC 155, but now due to his taping schedule, he will now wait until, of course, 
April. Um, when it comes to that, uh, hopefully this fight actually fucking happens. The last three Ultimate Fighter coaches fights got canceled due to injury. Most recently, the uh, Vic, the uh, Dominic Cruz Uriah Faber fight got canceled because Cruz got injured. Because Ortiz was injured against Chuck Liddell, Brock Lesnar injured against Gio Dos Santos. So hopefully, John Bones Jones and Jail Sonnen stays healthy for this fight in April. So there you go. John Bones Jones, Jail Sonnen, coaches on the next season of Ultra Fighter, which will start around spring, taping soon. And of course, it'll lead towards a title fight in April. So uh, there you go. Jones is no longer being a pussy around Jail. He's going to face Jail as a coach in, in the fight. So there you go. Ultra Fighter, Sonnen Jones. Now, on with news on the WWE. Should say this. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. You don't want to find out the result of tonight's main event, which is, of course, going to be on anytime soon on the Ion Network. Don't watch. So I'll say if, if you're not going to watch this last part because you don't want to find out who wins the uh, main event tonight, uh, see you later. So I'll give you five seconds to click off this channel. So thank you for watching. If you don't want to see the spoiler alert. Okay, for those who decided to stick around and watch the spoiler look, Kofi Kingston, despite kicking the hell out of Miz and almost giving Miz a concussion on Monday's Raw, wins the Intercontinental Championship tonight on the main event, taped last night in Memphis. So, uh, it's kind of weird that you reward a guy for being the crap out of Miz, kicking him so bad he almost gave him a concussion and giving him the IC Championship. It's kind of a weird situation, so, uh, See how Kofi does his IC champion. He's been multiple IC champion. So, and I wish Kofi would become the, the champ, but he's been held back either by the company or by the or by himself. So there you go. Kofi Kingston, despite kicking the fuck out of Miz this past Monday on Wall, becomes the new Intercontinental Champion tonight on Main Event on Iron TV. That is it for the attack line for the day. See you later. Then bye. You've all been attacked. Bye the news, Paul Zach. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Yeah.